Hey YouTube people, I'm back again with my beery Christmas today and today also number 10 to review and again I'm gonna tell you what degrees it is best served on and what food goes well with it. So the beer is best served on 6 to 8 degrees again and the food comparing really nice to it is the Mexican food. So let's show you the can because it's a can and it is this one rather excited for that one you might see in this style of cartoonish things again before so pineapple slice it's called and it's from Lervig Lervig and they're from Norway if I'm correct I'm gonna see yeah they're from Norway the beer coming it's coming in at, at the ABV I'm looking for, 7.6% ABV, so pineapple slice, let's try it, uh, let's hope there's a lot of pineapple, okay, so on the can is already pineapple extract, so these are no hops that's, that do deliver some pineapple notes to it, but it's actually pineapple puree, most it's a puree, puree they used, but it's a actually an extract this one so okay let's get it in a glass and see how it looks and tastes and smells Lervig, Lervig really nice uh, brewery oh I'm gonna show it on the camera okay look at this strong carbonation going on a little bit of a smaller head but also I'm gonna tell you Normally when I open a can for myself, I will drink it always from the can, especially with these fruity, more fruity IPA styles. Yeah, this is a Dipa, a double IPA of course. So, okay, let's get it on the nose and because it's, yeah, it's also a little bit hazy like you see. Uh, one finger head, yeah, hazy yellowish color, some, yeah, goldenish, golden, yellow to golden color. Okay, let's get it on those. Cheers, guys. Oh, this is really... But not your fresh pineapple smells. It's, it's, it's like a little bit... A pineapple thing that is some getting older already. Because, of course, when you do pineapple extract in there, and the yeast will be eating all this these sugars the taste will be also different you won't get a really a fresh pineapple taste actually but a rather older one in taste so it could be yeah there's little slight off flavors because I have tried, tried it also before with the real oranges I put in my in my fermentation bucket and it wasn't a success it's also in the beginning it smells really good but after a while, the oranges do degrade and even if there is alcohol, they can't put up to, yeah, you know, when things get older, even the alcohol can't, can't uh, stop that. So let's get it, uh, taste, the, the taste. Yeah. It is thick on the mouth, it's more like floral, you can get a pineapple, but like I told you, it isn't a fresh tasting pineapple one, it's also slight bitter, I do get also, yeah, that floral to grassy notes here, for a dipa, if we're talking about booziness in the beer, this isn't really boozy, but you can get a hint of the booziness because it's 7.6% ABV and not everyone is good at hiding that huge, that's more amount, a uh, higher ABV. But is it a good beer? Uh, I don't know. I had uh, I, IPAs that were like smelling like pineapple and that, that was only from hops, the hops only. And they were m much more fresher tasting than this one. So yeah, 
this is a slide of a cardboard thing going on, you know, the wet cardboard. No, I'm not really a fan of this. It is just, but it is thick and creamy. You get the grassy and the floral notes. You get slight hint of spiciness. I don't know which yeast they have used because that's not always on the can also. But overall, no, not a, I'm not a favorite of it. Although the can art is really nice all the time with Lervig, Lervig. So the pineapple slice isn't a really nice one. <laughs> I'm gonna give this also five and a half out of ten because the no it doesn't taste fresh it doesn't taste like an like a normal double ipa when you have your hops in fresh hops and it's all tastes much fresher and crisp and clean this is not tasting crisp and clean this is more like you know the cardboard the wet cardboardy thing going on the floral okay the floral is okay but the grassy thing and a slight earthy but because we, if we're talking about cardboards the wet cardboards you do get some earthy notes, of course, but to me, it has a slight off flavor. Like that wet cardboard, cardboard is an off flavor, of course, and you don't want it in a beer that has that you that you think it's gonna be crisp and clean and easy and smooth. This is actually none of those. So okay, five and a half. I'm gonna round it up here. Nothing more to say about it. Uh, I will do a video this weekend about brewing for beginners so keep an eye out for that guys i'm gonna put some work in it of course to get a video together and cut a little bit here and there and put some effects to it so if i do it to tomorrow at uh tomorrow evening i will shot sh uh, shoot most of the videos and then put them together it will be next week the video will be coming out so take a look at that uh, for all the people who haven't brewed before this is the ideal time with covid going on a lot of people start brewing and you can see it also when you look at the home brew shops uh, you see those kits it's all all done for you already from the brewery itself so the mashing is be has been done so actually it's the words but it's a sticky syrupy kind of concentrated stuff in a bag that you have to warm up but it's all done for you all also the hops and all, and all are in there already so you have to just clean your buckets and get your stuff cleaned oh that's a really important part of course when brewing and then you just have to get this syrupy thing in the buckets with some extra sugars and if you want to, because I do that all the time, I wanted to be more hoppy. I do boil some hops at uh, the late stage, so I'm not going to do a 60 minute boil because 60 minute boils will make the, the bitterness in the beer, you know. But when you add hops at the latest moment, like five minutes to go or like at the end of the boil, and you just put them in and wait a little bit the oils of the hops will come free even from 70 degrees on and i know this from a guy from several forums actually from 70 degrees on and above so you don't have to boil it actually from 70 degrees if you throw your hops in that war that water at 70 degrees it will also release the hop oils and you will also get the hoppiness in your beer after and then i all also, also do the dry hopping later also and i use a rather huge amount for dry hopping so people who are telling me i use 50 grams for dry hopping and then expecting to have a, a really fruity beer forget it i have uh, i have done and you can call me crazy like to 20 liters i have done like 450 grams I'm not joking, but also with the hops in at the end of the boil and the bitter, the bitter hops, I did do that also. But altogether, I used 400, 450 grams of hop pellets, not hop flowers, because they do give a rather uh, floral, grassy notes, and I don't want it in my IPAs. So I use always the pellets. 
So remember this guys, so I'm going to tell you all about this in the video and how to do it, how to clean your stuff, how to boil your hops if you want to do it, and how to uh, do the calculations for the ABV and stuff. I'm going to tell you all with the hydrometer and uh, what do you, also what to expect when you buy a starter's kit, what will be in there, I'm going to show you all of that. So this is going to be a, hopefully a great video and much people will watch this who like to start their beer with this easy to brew kits. You don't have to do anything. There's no expensive gear you, go, you got to buy or something. Just buy the buckets and it will be like 40, 50 euros max because you only need one bucket to be uh, honest. Some people do transfer from one to another to make the beer clearer, but it doesn't infect the taste. The only thing that can happen is when you, you get an infection by transferring it from the one bucket to another one. But I don't, I do it 50-50, like sometimes I do transfer them, but I've noticed the beer in taste-wise, there is not much difference. If you use one bucket, there will be more sediment at the bottle, uh, at the bottom of the bucket, but that's also no problem because the spigot, you know, the hand, the the handle you must open, and I think it's called the spigot, is also a little above the bottom, so all the yeast that will be down to the bottom will be underneath the tap. You got to open the tap, yeah, or the spigot. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, that's enough said. To, so watch out for that video to come, I think, next week, because I got to do some, yeah, some work to it, of course, to make different videos from different places in my kitchen. And uh, But I'm going to tell you all, it's going to be a great video. You can learn a lot, because I also search a lot on forums, how to do things and how, how long to do this, or how to do, how calculate that, because it's... Nobody tells you, 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 with those uh, ready to brew kits, there is some information, but that's only about the beer, how long you have to wait, the sugar you add, ha have to add, but nothing about temperature or yeast and stuff, because the yeast will always be also in there, in those bags, ready to brew, uh, syrupy, malty thing. But uh, I don't. I don't use the yeast from that from those kits because they tend to be not the best most of the time. But I'm gonna tell you all you will see in that video because I'm rambling on again, <laughs> and you got really tired of me already. Shut up your mouth, you stupid Jew, Jew. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it with this. But uh, I can tell you so much about it, and it's always a passion of mine also. I've tried so many times and I brewed such a lot after each other. I want to do all these very nice hoppy IPAs. Like, yeah, if you're talking about 450 grams of hoppalettes in one 20 liter session, people go call me nuts. But I tell you, it was a superb beer and it was going really. And I'm not j kidding about this. I did call the beer Hop Bomb. You can see it on my untapped. I did uh, from your turbos beer of, I don't know, your turbo brewery, but it isn't actually a brewery, some buckets. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was super. I, I, I'm going to tell you, it was really coming close to not even a Belgian ones because I have never tasted one in Belgium like that, but it was more going to the U USA ones. And people who do had that one. I give it to them to try. They were amazed. But yeah, like I said, it was 450 grams hops and you got to be really careful with a huge amount of dry hops because the diacetyl, diacetyl, that's also an off flavor, can kick in and your brew is ruined. I, I tell you, and if you, if you put a lot of money in, into it, like I did that time, your brew, your 20 liters will be gone. And I had it several times. The 20 liter was really, there was an infection going on, like the, the cardboard things, or it was too yeasty. Yeah, some things can happen like that. 
like you know also in the air when you are brewing there are particles like you know dust and stuff and but also bacterials going on like open fermentation with the sour beers that's also in your kitchen there is also things flying around maybe you can you can see them but they can get in the beer and they can get infected it's possible they infect your beer over, over time so watch out for that i'm going but i'm gonna tell you all in that video i'm gonna really gonna round it up now oh, oh, i can tell you so much about it but okay uh let's wait for the video man uh, guys let's wait for that video to come and i hope you will learn a lot out of it and you will try also just if you're watching now buy that starter package i'm not going to i'm not going to joke around buy the starter package you can brew a beer for for one euro and i'm not lying about this you can brew a beer for one euro and it will be a really nice beer it does it does depend a little bit on which which kits you are buying because there are different ones of course but i'm going to tell you also that i'm going to show you some that i had before and i had some laying around the, still the boxes so you will see that all of that in my video so buy yourself now on any homebrew shop a starter kit with some buckets what is enough but see you do get all the things with it like your spoon to stir and a, a cleaning brush and uh, caps you can get all mostly you, you, can, you get also the caps with it and you get some cleaning material with it and you get a hydrometer with it and stuff like that so and also a uh, a machine to put your caps on your bottles that will be also there so watch out for look out for a kit like that where where it's all in one package and you don't have to buy anything else except for then the extra brewing sugar you have to add, add also with those kits but otherwise you don't need to have anything you can buy some hops extra and if it's, it's if it's an if it's an ipa you're brewing or a pilsner and you want it to be really hoppy those kids do deliver some hoppiness and bitterness but if you want more hoppiness then you get to buy some extra pellets for dry hopping actually so you can try that at the last moment to dry hop but i'm gonna tell you also in the video <laughs> okay okay bye guys tomorrow uh, beer christmas number 11 really excited for that and watch out for the video to come next week about brewing for beginners so get yourself that starter package now from a homebrew shop and do and follow with me how to do it you will be really amazed you can do it in like half an hour i'm not i'm not kidding in in half an hour or maybe less you can brew your first beer with your yeast in then the fer fermentation goes on you know the water slot we call it but it's a it's a thing actually to release your co2 when it's uh, fermentation is going on uh, i got to search for the name in english because it has a special specific name and then from then on you got to wait anyway till it stops uh till the carbonation stops till the water slot is bubbling isn't bubbling anymore there's no more pressure coming out and then you can actually do the dry hopping and short after that like three days to four days max you want to dry hop and then you can put it straight into the bottles but i'm gonna show you no problem uh see you tomorrow guys and don't forget a beer a day keeps the doctor away bye peace